Hello, welcome. We're losing all of our sunlight here. Uh, the light coming from outside is like being reflected off of snow when it's very blue. I turned some lights on inside, it didn't help any, so we're just gonna have to live with the consequences of the blue. Now this is The Ferret, number six. It's a book I got for free because I do my comic book shopping at Graham Crackers and when you go there on a Wednesday, new comic book day, you get three books for free out of the dollar bin. And so this is one of them I got. I'm slowly collecting Malibu books for free. Like, what price is better than the price of zero dollars? Now, I don't know anything about this character. Or if I did know something about him, I've forgotten it. So kind of the setup here, and they do a good job on this front page of kind of filling us in on what the heck is happening. Uh, hold on, let, before I dive into that, like, let's, let's take a side trip over to, like, what most modern Marvel books look like. You don't get a splash page with crazy action. Instead, you get like a paragraph of text telling you, here's what's happening. Then you get the credits. And there's nothing to suck you in. There's nothing to pull you in. You open this book up, which has a kind of cool cover already. You open it up, and boom, you got this dude in a crazy pose, swirling energy vortices all around him, behind him, stars, planets, laser beams. The issue title. I kind of liked it. I thought this was a really great, like, inside front cover. And the narration boxes are telling us all about what's going on. So he had been fighting this dude named Bloodlust here, trying to save his friend Amazing Man or something or other. And some kind of, like, something happens, and he teleports away to some magical fantasy land where he saves this blonde princess from certain death at the hands of her assassin, and then he gets teleported away. And he's just going all over the place. Uh, meanwhile, this guy, I think his name was Bloodlust, he's busy just, like, having a great fight with this dude. Like, when I say they're having a great fight, I mean it. There is so much dynamic posing and fun body positions and action and great angles and stuff. Uh, the sound effects are A++. Shoom. And look at the, like, gradient and the speed lines. Thrack. It looks kind of like uh, it's cracking down at the bottom. Slam. Like, I, I just love all these little speed, uh, the speed lines. All, all the text bubbles here for sound effects. They're not text bubbles. All the sound effects just look great. They feel great. The action in this book feels fantastic. And it's all kind of capped off with what has to be one of the best uses of a sound effect I've ever seen in the comic book where the panel is inside the sound effect. I'm sorry, I this is just super cool. Hold on, who worked on this book? I think their names were down at the bottom of the front page art, weren't they? Yeah. Dean Zachary, Jeff Whitting. Thumbs up, dudes. You got it. I... <laughs> To be coming into this not knowing anything about this dude, I had way, way too much fun uh, reading this book. Most of this book is them fighting, too. Like, this book is just kind of like, what if we just had a big, dumb action movie as a comic book? Now, some of this stuff is, like, really convoluted, like the setup here of him teleporting around. I don't know why that's the case. In fact, it happens after the fight, too. He gets teleported back here, and it starts setting up, like... Some future stuff. Royal blood. Different art team. And that's okay. But uh, yikesy doodle, right? Like, uh, that is not what I expected. And that sets up like some more stuff. And he teleports again. and It's just all over the place. I don't know what's going on. Despite like the book doing its best to inform me. About what was going on. I don't really know what's going on. And I guess that's okay because I'm having fun looking at it and reading it and all that jazz. So what is there to complain about? Turns out I don't really have a complaint. I just kind of feel like I should be reading the rest of the ferret so I can understand it. I don't know if this guy hangs out with the protectors. Uh, they mentioned the protectors in the book, but I was trying to think back to the issues of the protectors I've looked at, and I don't remember seeing this dude in them. But that could also just be me forgetting. So, I don't know. 
Kind of a fun introduction to this character. I don't know what Genesis is. Like, I don't know what's going on. But it was fun anyway. You all take care of yourselves. For the price of free, I liked it. Bye-bye.